Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Well, we have one announcement, and that is that right after the service today, we will have an Easter egg hunt outside. So I want to welcome everybody to participate in that, I guess, unless it is pouring rain. But otherwise, we will do that. Any other announcements? Anyone? All right. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Mother Bryn Cadell, and I'm so pleased to welcome you to St. Michael and All Angels Episcopal Church on this beautiful Easter morning. And I'm thrilled to see those of you in this space, those of you in that space, those of you joining at home. Happy Easter. I'm so glad you're here. I invite you just to take a moment to take a deep breath, and we'll begin our service in just a few minutes. Please stand, and we'll begin our worship singing hymn number 178. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
be with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all of his people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich foods filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 118. And if you would, let's read responsively and half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. That he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation Anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. 
He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that He is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All prophets testify about Him that everyone who believes in Him receives forgiveness of sin through His name. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And the very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. That first Easter morning, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went to the tomb. They carried spices that could be used to anoint Jesus' body. Jesus had died on a Friday. The Sabbath begins at sundown on Friday night and lasts all day Saturday until the sun goes down Saturday night. Since Jesus died Friday afternoon and wasn't put into the tomb until the evening, the women hadn't been able to tend to his body because the Sabbath had already begun. With the Sabbath over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome prepared themselves 
to prepare Jesus' body for its final burial. I imagine all of us have had to steal ourselves to do something hard. There's a certain amount of self-preparation that one has to go through in order to be able to face a difficult task. As the women approach the tomb on Sunday morning, I imagine each of them weighed down by her sorrow. Each of them trying to be strong for the others. Each of them filled with a sense of purpose and a sense of privilege to be able to provide this final service for Jesus. They've set out to do this thing that will be difficult, but that must be done. But their minds are so consumed with their grief and the task ahead that they haven't even really thought it through because they don't have a plan for how they'll get in once they get there. But they arrived and found the stone rolled back and a young man sitting in a white robe sitting inside the tomb. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. That's a pretty descriptive explanation. No chance of mistaken identity. Who is this guy? Was he there only to wait for the women to show up? Mark doesn't say. The man in the white robe provided three instructions. First, do not be alarmed. Second, go. And third, tell the disciples and Peter. The women only did one of those three things. They did go, and with some speed, apparently. Mark's Gospel says they fled. It says they were seized by terror and amazement, and they said nothing to anyone. So much for not being alarmed, and so much for telling the disciples. What's interesting about this is that this is the original ending of Mark's Gospel. That's where it stops. The only people who know about the resurrection are terrified and silent. Well, except for that mysterious guy in the robe. And yet, in the years in which Mark's story was first being told and later written down, it became obvious that the women hadn't remained terrified and they hadn't remained silent. After their adrenaline had gone down a little and after they'd talked it over with one another and their overall sense of alarm decreased, at some point, they must have decided to tell. Imagine hearing this story of Jesus, Mark's gospel, for the very first time, each detail brand new. Someone would have recited the whole thing. It takes about an hour and a half to get from the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Imagine a guest coming to your home, sharing a meal, offering to tell your family a story. This story has the most incredible surprise ending. The empty tomb, silent and fearful witnesses. And so the boldest, the most outspoken person in your family has to ask the question, wait, what? If they said nothing to anyone, then how did you hear this story? And that's, that's the invitation, isn't it? See, I believe that faith begins with questions. I think that faith requires questions. I think there's something to love about a gospel that intentionally does not give us the answers but instead sets us up to ask questions that drive us to deeper and deeper understanding and deeper and deeper relationship with God. The women arrived at the tomb and found it empty. How did this happen? Why? When exactly? And if Jesus is going ahead to Galilee, where is he now? And then there are the women themselves. Why didn't they tell at first? What made them change their minds? When? Who did they tell first? How did they explain it? Faith 
is neither about finding the specific answers to these questions, nor is, about, is it about refusing to ask them. Jesus told us to be like children. What is childlike faith? We do a disservice to children if we think that having a childlike faith means we're supposed to be accepting and obedient, going along with whatever we're told. If you've ever met a child, and I feel certain Jesus had met some, you know that children, almost above all other things, are questioners. I think a childlike faith is one that continues to ask questions, particularly when it's time to go to bed or you're in the middle of something else. Not only that, but I believe that God delights in hearing our questions when we ask. Faithful Christians have struggled with various hows, whys, whens, and wheres for the last 2,000 years. We deepen our faith, we deepen our understanding of God, we deepen our relationship with God when we learn from each other and allow ourselves to be changed. We're here this morning because on a Sunday morning over 2,000 years ago, women expected to find the dead body of their friend and instead found an empty tomb. We are gathered in this place, some inside the church, some inside the parish hall, some watching from their homes, because he who was dead has been raised. Christ is alive. And as much as I believe the very real and very true presence of Christ to be here with us in this space, I also very much believe that you will encounter the very true presence of Christ out in the world. So to paraphrase the man in white, don't be afraid. Go, tell, and keep your eyes peeled for Jesus on the road because he's already out there ahead of you. How, why, when, where? Keep asking the questions. I will too. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please stand and join with me as we say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We, pr we praise for you and for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. The Ferber family, Brandon, Tara, Robin, Stephen, Terry and Frank, Dave, Karen, Peyton, Omo and Janet, Ashley, Linda, Johnny and Tamara, Tom and family. Debbie, Troy, for all who are suffering from disease and or financial hardships during the pandemic, in the deceasing cycle of prayer, we give thanks for resurrection, one crest, and redeemer, Eagle Pass. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who celebrate with awe the Paschal Feast may be found worthy to attain to everlasting joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please wave your peace to one another. Peace. So I know we have one birthday today, and if, if there's anyone else here who's celebrating a birthday, please come up so we can pray for your birthday. I'll, I'll be patient. I can. I used to be a teacher. I can just wait all day. <laughs> Kara, is that right? So we're going to pray for Kara and for Jeff. What day is your birthday? Today and today's Jeff's birthday. No, the tenth. The tenth. Okay. Then I had it wrong when I posted it. But okay, good, excellent. Well, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. If you look in your bulletin, we'll pray together for Jeff and for Kara on their birthdays. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants Jeff and Kara as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you on your birthday and always. And do we have any anniversaries? All right. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption 
recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Michael, David, Rayford, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, 